What's up guys, my name is Abdul Nafe and welcome back to a brand new course. Now, I just wanted to make this quick course uh, to sort of teach you guys the basics of lighting and more specifically cinematic lighting inside of Blender 3D, uh, right? Because I think lighting is what takes average renders from looking average to looking outstanding. I think that's uh, lighting and texturing. I think it, these are the most two, two most important things uh, when it comes to making your 3D models look good. And so we're going to be learning the basics of cinematic lighting in a very project-based approach, uh, which means that we're going to be making two really good projects inside of Blender 3D. Right, so the first project which we're going to be making is going to be this amazing shoe render. Uh, we're going to be taking a model from the internet and then we're going to be lighting it completely inside of Blender 3D. We're going to learn the basics of key lights, rim lights, and fill lights and stuff like that. After this project, you're going to have a basic knowledge of how to light products and how to make product visualization scenes, which look absolutely phenomenal. And not only that, after completing this project, you're also going to have an amazing render to add to your portfolio. After that, we're going to be making an amazing realistic car render inside uh, of Blender 3D. This is going to be a nighttime neon style uh, render in which we're going to be learning the basics of how to sort of use reflections in lighting, how to sort of place lights in such a way that the reflections are going to be good, and how to use HDRIs in Blender 3D, and just the basics of how to uh, add lights in such a way that your scene looks very appealing. And once again, after this project, you're going to have an amazing car render to add to your portfolio as well. Right, so what are you waiting for? Let's start this class today and then let's take your lighting skills to the next level. Right, so let's begin with our first scene, which is going to be a shoe scene. We're going to be lighting this, uh, lighting the shoe uh, in a very cinematic and dramatic way. Uh, so you guys can basically learn how to light scenes, which are basically the main purpose, purpose of those scenes is to showcase a product, uh, basically product visualization scenes. Uh, once you learn uh, the basics with the shoe, you can basically do uh, basically light any pretty much any scene, right? So I'm just going to go to the internet and let's first get a, get ourselves a model. Now you can use Blender Kit if you want. You just go to Blender, and I, I hope you have the Blender Kit add-on installed if not you can just go to blenderkit.com and just go to the internet and blender kit just search blender kit go to blenderkit.com and then just download blender kit and it's going to show you the instructions right here okay uh alternatively what you can do is you can just go to sketchfab.com and then you can search for a shoe that's what i like to do because the variety of shoes in sketchfab is really good just click downloadable to see the shoes which we can download and just choose whichever one you think looks good now, I, I'm looking for a pair of Jordans, because I love Jordans, to be honest. How about I just search for Jordans? Jordan. These are paid. Um, yeah, this is free, but I'm not sure if the textures are good or not. Because part of, the, uh, part of your scene is lighting, but another equally important part is your texturing. If your texturing is not good, then no matter how well you light it, your scene is just not going to look realistic. So... Okay, this is a 3D scan. That's not useful for us. Let's see if we can find something good. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to be finding any Jordans. I think those are some good shoes. Most of these are paid. You can obviously pay for shoes if you want. Uh, pay for these 3D models if you want. But I just don't want to do that. I don't know if this is like a... 3D scan or an actual model. And the textures do seem to be pretty detailed, so I think we can go with this. However, let's just look for let's just look for a little more. Hopefully we can find something better. I like the Jordan lows, by the way. These high ones are uh, I don't really like them that much. However, if you can't find anything else, then I think we're gonna go with them. Let's search for shoes so that. It basically shows us everything, all sorts of shoes. And then we can just choose any one of them. That's a good option. Yeah, now again, this is, this is going to come down to your personal preference and your own creativity. I would definitely recommend you to not use the same shoes which I'm going to use so that you can sort of learn and you can essentially increase your creativity and your creative skills. So yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. I think I'm going to go with this. We can change the color maybe later on. However, I think for now it is perfectly fine. So just download 3D model. Uh, I'm going to be downloading the GITF format because that is easily openable inside of Blender 3D. Do not download the USDZ file, uh, file format because USDZs cannot be opened by default inside of Blender 3D. So just wait for this to open. While it does that, we can browse for some more shoes. Maybe we'll find something better. But yeah, 
finding good models is a really important part of your whole uh, 3D animation journey. I think this one, this one's a really good model too. I found one. I found a good one on Blender Kit too. So you can just go to Blender Kit, and I'm just going to search for shoe. And I think the one which I was originally planning to use was. I don't know where it is. Let's search for free first. Free first. Let's see if it comes up now. Yeah, I think this one. Yeah, this one. Adidas running shoes. This is a really good option if you want uh, a free shoes, which is available directly inside of Blender 3D. However, I'm just going to be using this. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting all these files. I'm going to be creating a new folder inside my desktop. Ignore the mess of my desktop. Uh, I'm going to call this Jordan's. And then just select everything, just drag everything and drop it inside that folder. And now we can just open this inside of Blender, just go to Blender, go to File, Import, and then GITF, go to Desktop, I mean, wherever you saved that file, and then just select scene.GITF, then import that. Right, perfect. So I think the model is looking pretty good. I hope the textures are fine too. I'm just going to be closing this Blender kit out. Yeah, I think the more, the textures are looking pretty decent too. Yeah, perfect. I think the normals, the normal maps and everything are looking absolutely phenomenal. Perfect. Right, so let's begin with the actual purpose of this class, which is to light the scene. Right, so what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to be going to edit mode and I'm going to be deleting one of these shoes, right? Because I don't want uh, sort of, yeah, because I don't want to sort of have two shoes in my scene. I'm just going to be pressing Alt Z on my keyboard to, so that we can go into extra mode and then just select one of them and delete. Okay, so the laces are a separate object. So I'm just going to select that and delete this as well. Hmm, interesting. Why is it not deleting? Right, perfect. So now we only have one shoe, which we're going to light and let's place it property first. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be selecting the sketch file model. And then actually, I think we can just directly select it like that. Let's move it in the X axis like that. Let's rotate it in the Z axis slightly. Let's move it up. Let's rotate it in the X axis like that. Move it up. And then let's rotate it something like that. So I think something like that should be a good um, frame for us. I think something like that should be good. Let's first set up our camera so that we can get an idea of how our scene is going to look. And then we can just start with the lighting. Also save your project. Uh, I'm just going to call this shoe lighting. Save Blender file. And then let's go ahead and add a camera. So I'm just going to go inside the camera. And then we can just go to view, lock camera to view. And then we can bring it out, something like that. And just place the camera right there. I think that should be a good position. And then we can go, uh, we can go to the output properties and I'm going to be setting the resolution Y to 1920 as well so that we have a square frame. And then I'm going to also, I'm also going to be increasing the focal length to something like hundred millimeters because I want this render to be pretty flat. I don't want it to have any sort of depth. I think something like that is a good option. Now you can obviously go ahead and play around with the the placement of your model but i think something like that is good i'm satisfied with that let's unlock camera to view and now let's begin with the actual lighting portion of this class so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be right clicking right here and i'm going to be clicking vertical split so that we can split the viewport in two halves right so this part i'm going to be using this as my sort of final uh, as a way to sort of look at my final results right so i'm just going to be closing this out i'm going to be closing all the guides and then i'm going to be setting this on rendered mode Right now we are inside EV render engine. So I'm just going to click on my render properties. Let's go to cycles and set the device to GPU compute. If you have a GPU, otherwise CPU is fine too. And I'm going to turn on denoise and I'm going to go and set the denoiser to optics. If you have an Nvidia RTX graphic card, then you can set this to optics and it's going to be a little faster. However, you can just set it to automatic if you don't. Right. So what I'm going to do now is that I'm first thing I'm going to go to, um, the environment properties, the world properties, and I'm going to be setting the color to black. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to light everything from scratch, right? Because otherwise it's going to have this gray color 
and everything is gonna be a little brighter. That's not something which I want, right? I want to have complete control over the lighting. So that's why I am doing that. Let's go to viewport mode in this viewport. I am pressing Alt Z to get out of the extra mode, by the way. And now let's add lights in this viewport and we can control the lights using this and we can look at the final results using this viewport. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna to go to add light and then you basically have four options for lights inside of Blender 3D. We're going to be using the area lights in these kind of scenes. Uh, for example, the product visualization scenes, you basically want to use, want to always use area lights because I think they look a lot more realistic, right? And so I'm just going to be moving this light up, placing it something like that. Let's scale it up quite a lot. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to be bringing it down, something like that. And so basically the lighting, uh, the lighting setup, which we're going to be using is called the three point lighting setup. And the way it works is I'm just going to go to Google and I'm going to show you an example. Three point lighting. So basically the way it works is by having uh, an object in the middle, right? Your camera is often right here. So here's your camera. It's not shown here, but you know, um, so you have a key light, which is the main light, which is actually lighting up your subject. You have a fill light, which is filling in the shadows. I'm going to show you an example of this too, by the way. And then you have a backlight. Now, this is very, very important. Uh, this is also called the rim light. Um, and I think this light is probably the most important. This is what makes, uh, and this is what separates decent renders, uh, decent lighting from absolutely amazing lighting. I think this is the main separating factor. And so, for example, in this example, you're going to see that this part has the key lighting, right? This part is lit up. This part is dark. However, some of the shadows are being filled in by the fill light and in the back, well, he doesn't really have an, have a rim light. So I'm going to show you an example, which has a rim light. Yeah. In this one, you're going to see that this part, this side part right here is actually lit by the rim light, which I think makes it look really good. And in this example as well, the hair are actually being lit by a rim light, right? And in this example right here, this part right here is lit, being lit by a rim light, which I think really uh, looks really good, right? And so what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be starting with the limb rim light. That's what I usually like to do. And I think that's what probably all of you should do out there as well. So I'm going to be rotating this in the X axis minus negative 90 degrees. Let's go to the top view and also keep saving your project, by the way. And just place your light something like that. Now do note where your camera is. So our camera is right here. So I'm going to be placing my rim light something like that. I think something like that should be a good position for my rim light. Now, right now we're not seeing anything and that's because the intensity of our light is very low. So I'm going to be selecting the light and I'm going to be increasing the intensity to something like 1000. I want to see if that is enough. Yeah, I think that is enough. And actually that's not enough. We're going to have to increase it a little more. But anyways, you're going to see that we are sort of starting to highlight the shoe from the side, right? Which I think looks really good. So I think something like 2000 might be good. And the position I'm going to be adjusting this. So basically, the the more you take this light behind the object, the less, uh, the, sorry, the more sharper your highlight is going to become, right? So right now you're going to see if I just take it somewhere there, you're going to see that our highlight is very sharp, right? But if I just rotate this something like that and bring it right here, you're going to see that our highlight is pretty um, soft, right? And more part of the object is being highlighted. So you want to use a balance of both of these things. I generally like to go with one rim light, I like to set it at a very sharp angle, something like this. And another rim light from the other side, I like to set that at a very, at a relatively more, um, what do you call it? Smoother angle, right? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to press shift D on my keyboard to duplicate this light. And I'm going to be bringing it right there. And then I'm going to be rotating something like that. And so we're going to be using this rim light to light up this part of our scene. Okay, I think this shoe is coming along pretty well. But yeah, what I'm going to do, one thing is that I'm going to be selecting both of the lights by pressing shift on my keyboard, and I'm going to be scaling them up in the Z axis. So S and Z, something like that. And then I'm going to be scaling it down in the X axis, but I think I'm going to have to do that separately, both of them, something like that. And with this, something like that as well. Perfect. So I think our scene is looking pretty decent right, right now. And I think one thing which I need to do is I need to maybe bump up the intensity a little bit more because our, uh, the scale of our lights is pretty high. So, and we can move the lights down. Actually, I'm gonna move it, move this up. And then for the bottom, we're gonna have a third rim light. You can have as many rim lights as you want. And I think having more rim lights is oftentimes better, but don't go overboard, obviously. That goes without saying. And so I'm gonna be copying this, Shift D. 
shift z to move it in the x and y axis and if i if i just place this light right here and if i take it down and i'm going to go to my top view place it something like that and rotate it in the x axis in the sorry z axis and then we can rotate it in the y axis as well 90 degrees and now i'm going to be rotating in the x axis so that it points up let's go to the side view and let's place this light something like that so that it sort of lights up the bottom part of the shoe right so basically this is before that bottom rim light you're going to see that there's no definition in the bottom part but if i turn it on you're going to see that the bottom part is being highlighted properly and the shape of the shoe is pretty visible right so i think that is something very important and you can just play around with this i think something like that should be good yeah i'm going to go with this, something like that and the top part is still not that highlighted so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be adding a fourth rim light uh yeah so i think rim lights are what sort of separates all right, guys, thanks a lot for watching the preview of this course. Now, I really hope you're enjoying this course so far. And if you want to watch the rest of this course, uh, it's, it is on Udemy. It is paid, unfortunately. However, you can find a really good discount if you go to the link in the description. Uh, now, unfortunately, YouTube does not really pay that much. And making these videos takes a lot of effort and time. Uh, so I do have to make these videos uh, paid for now. Uh, but yeah, hopefully in the future, I will consider making free videos as well. Yeah, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And if you go to the link uh, in the description, you will be supporting this channel as well. See ya.